Gerd Jansson, he is running a label, Running Back, that most of you, I guess, are familiar with. He's released uh, music by artists like uh, Radio Slave, Toterje, Mark E, and uh, many other artists. He's writing for Groove Magazine, for Specs Magazine. He's working for the Red Bull Music Academy. Um, he's working in a record shop and... Um, not anymore. Not anymore. Records don't sell anymore, so I stopped okay. working in a record shop. That's why shop. you decided to actually release records and sell, sell them. Yeah. All right, I see. That yeah, makes really sense. clever. <laughs> so um, I'm starting off with a question that um, that is obviously stolen, but how do you tell your grandmother what you do? Uh, I think my grandmother has no idea of what I'm really doing. She just wonders that I get paid for it. So, And I'd you say you do music? Yeah, kind of, not, not really. My, my grandmother is 87 and she grew up in Romania um, so she doesn't have a clue at all. Do you sometimes play her some of your music? No, never. Never. Okay. She just knows that I travel to and from the airport a lot. And you make other people happy with your music? Yeah, I guess so. You guess so. So how did it start off then? Um, I mean, obviously there must, be, well, must have been kind of a turning point. Um, or did you grow up saying, I'm, I'm going to dedicate my life to house music because that's what Gerd is... He could actually be wikipedia.house.org. I hope I didn't dedicate my life to <laughs> house music. Um, I, I don't know, I have like a typical, I would say, I, I come from Frankfurt am Main, um, and they invented techno there. And, um, Did they invent techno there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Agree? If, you, <laughs> if you talk to people from Frankfurt, they think they invented it. But it was called EBM back then. Um, and I have like a typical uh, history of listening to the radio. There w was a show by a guy called uh, Klaus Walter uh, on the Hessische Rundfunk, uh, HR3. And he was l a little bit like a poor man's John Peel. And he played music all across the board and I always liked that. So I, this was like early 90s. So I could listen to uh, the Pixies uh, Buchu Banten and the uh, big discussion about his Buddy Rider song back then. I don't know if you, if anyone listens to dancehall here. And then he also played stuff um, like the, I think it was the very first Detroit techno compilation on Tresor. And this was all Monday night, nine o'clock. And then on Saturday night, I was still at school and too young to go to clubs. You listen to things like Club Night with Sven Veit, who is like a uh, popular DJ from Frankfurt. Who is it again? Sven Fett. That sounds Fett. familiar. And uh, th those were my first kind of, um, uh, yeah, I don't know, steps into it. And I was just fascinated by this strange music called techno. But it took me not very long to um, actually discover that I didn't like it, but liked other things that also had a straight beat more. And, but it was before the internet, so those were the things where you learned and then you tried to sneak into clubs and, yeah. What, what time are we talking? 1991. 91. I think the first techno party I went to was in 91. 91, and that yeah. was... And I, we still had school on Saturdays, so my mum actually brought me there with the car and picked me up so I could be in school on time. <laughs> on time, okay. If you brought any of those musical references and we uh, can play those, just feel free to dig that out of your little bag. I don't but, have uh, a homeboy, yeah, no, a no, hippie and a funky dread with me now. <laughs> what, what is be, so special about this tune? I would say if, if d Deep House is a very raped term these days, um, and if you want to if you want to explain to something what's nice about Deep House, and, and it's always stupid to talk about real things, but um, I would say if I have to uh, burn all my house records, except for one, it would be this. This one. And do you remember the first moment that you listened to this one? Um, yeah, actually, I do. But it was just in a cafe and uh, a guy played it, like a typic typical bar DJ situation. And you got turned away by the conversation that was on because you wanted to know what is this kind of music that's playing? Yeah, okay. that's exactly how it went. 
Oh, I, I know those moments. <laughs> It's really difficult to interrupt this song, but we only have 30 minutes, so I guess you all get an idea of what it sounds like. It's round round two? Round two, New Day, yeah. New Day. I, um, I really remember the first time I listened to this one again. So that was special for you. It's a crew from Berlin connected to the Hard Wax Posse, I guess, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's with Mark Ernestus and uh, Moritz von Oswald, also known as Maurizio or ba Basic Channel. And I would say this is a super bold statement, but um, a few years after Kraftwerk, <laughs> those are actually the only guys from Germany that did something genuine. Genuine, authentic. Yeah. Not not authentic, but 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 like uh, as with their basic channel records. I don't know something like minimal techno wouldn't have happened that way without them. Even if they, I'm sure they don't want to take credit for that. But um, and also what they did as rhythm and sound with reggae music. It's 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 super special. I can't compare it to any anyone else or anything else. How did you get into DJing? Then did you think, oh, I'm working in a record shop and I got so many people asking me for tunes, there was, recommendations? There was just a club in that town called Kesselhaus and I hung out there all the time and then they asked me if I don't want to play some records and I did. That's how it works with the people working in the record shop. Yeah. Then. Oh, okay. And um, tra transition to Robert Johnson later on, you run a night there called Liquid, which yeah. has been going on Great for a really thing. long time. I guess everybody knows what Robert Johnson is in, in close to, to Darmstadt, it's a very, very well known club as well, super good sound system. I personally have never been there, I have to say. What's special about Robert Johnson? A uh, nice wooden floor. Uh, it's, it looks like a loft without, a col without the columns. And um, it's also stupid to say that because I play there. But to me, the, the thing is run by, by Atta, who was one of the guys behind the Playhouse label. And it comes pretty close to my taste of a club. It's very small, intimate, and the, the music is kind of the center of the attention, so it's not about selling beer bottles. Of course, you have to sell beer to keep it going, and, but um, yeah, I, I can't, it's hard to put it in, into words. It just feels right, and there aren't many places that feel right. That feel right, yeah, yeah that's true. So you were a DJ there, and you started a label, I think, in 2005. Um, Actually, in 2002, but yeah. uh, I had the release policy of putting out one record a year, or one record every two years. <laughs> so that's but why... Uh, how um, come you changed your mind? Uh, I started it uh, because a few friends of mine were producing music, and I thought I'll help them to put it out. And they kind of lost track. One guy wanted to be the next Adrian Sherwood, and started doing bad reggae tracks um, or not bad I never I never heard them because he's so shy that he n never showed it to me but he lost interest in, in, in dance music and the other guy went the northern soul route that's where they only collect seven inches that are super expensive um, and yeah so I, I, I happened to be on my own then and then I thought I either throw it in the bin but or I try and but was that the, still the time where you started a record label in order to either become famous or I you never just did put something <laughs> I, <laughs> no it make it, money with music I mean now no, it was I guess really most people it was really naive like it was just like with everything else I try and see if I can do it and and then I do it I still to this day don't have a GVL number which you should get if you do a label because that's something like GEMA for labels, so you get money from them. But I never got around so to fill out the 15 pages that it takes. So I hope none of your artists are in this room or 
Ah, oh, that's for for a label from the oh, label okay. side. I filled out some gamer things. Yeah, I, I also paid the gamer. You always have okay. to pay the gamer then, <laughs> otherwise they shut you down. So, is anybody in this room running a record label? Okay, there are a few. Only Steffen Berghahn. <laughs> Um, so back then you were releasing one record every two years, and then I think in 2007 or so, it changed that you yeah, decided it, it, to. Yeah, it, 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 uh, I think I kind of came to terms with my university career that it won't happen. If I, so I, um, I could have gone down the academic road. road but Very happy that you didn't? I don't know. I mean, there isn't a week where I don't think, oh shit, I could be... I could have a PhD by now and uh, sit in front of students. Um, and s instead of that, I'll spend my weekends making boom boom for drunk people. And um, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, like it's it's like I said. I'm I'm. It's hard for me to talk about that. It's just it, I, I go where it takes me. So there. But how much is in the end? Um kind of that you say you want to release music that doesn't have a home and which part is also that you think um, I mean is that has that changed over the years no I just want to release music that I would like to have myself on a record that's that's all it takes so it's artists that come to you and say listen to this and yeah it's very promiscuitive so I, I don't run it in a uh, I sleep with a lot of people. Um, it, it's, it's not like, usually you have a label and then you have like artists and they do the 12 inches for your label and then they do the album on your label and then they do another 12 inch and you stick with them and then all of a sudden they start doing strange kind of wannabe folky music but they are your, they are your repertoire so you have to stick with them and I never planned it like that. Like I just... You just say, okay, this is a killer tune, this uh, need to, needs to be heard. And yeah, it doesn't have to be a killer tune, it just has to be something I like. So I'm, I'm, so not, I'm, not, I'm not saying like, oh, every record I put out is a killer tune, everyone need, 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 needs to have that. Or it's so let's just listen to one of the tunes that um, came to you and immediately you thought, this needs to be out on my label, whether or not it's, I, it's I mean, going to be a seller or not. Actually, I, this is something uh, by a guy from Oslo, Todd Terje, and... Um, Anybody heard the name of Todd Terje? Maybe one or two? And, okay. and he did this thing, and I got it like two or three years ago on a CDR, um, and I really, really liked it, but he's, he's kind of, he's, a, he's, he's very much an artist, so uh, this thing feels like too simple or too stupid. So he would have never really pursued in, in putting it out. But I'm kind of a simple guy, so I uh, told him he has to put it out, and then he just offered it to me, and I, yeah, put it out. And then, we, it, then it became the biggest hit of the summer? No, nah, depends on where you go. Modern half Actually, trends. We, done we, by missed the part, we missed the part where everybody's wetting their pants. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's just about to come up. That's um, I, how many, just to get you some stats, how many have heard this tune before? Oh, that's good. Oh. See? It's a hit. It's a hit. Yeah. It's you still right. dig for music. You don't wait for people to give it to you. Yeah. You kind of yeah. go around and yeah. ask, oh, yeah. you got something new. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if I find something that I like and I think it should be worth, uh, to put that out, then I, I try to make it happen, yeah. Okay. So it's not like, the, the, it, it was just, and I mean in that demo policy of truth thing, it was like Larry Levan and Radio Slave, so I thought, <laughs> and Andy Soika, who was a, a guy from London who actually, or unfortunately passed away way too soon, and he, he was the kind of head behind 
projects like Atmosphere, like a, a, a early 80s boogie kind of thing. So I thought people might, if they at least Google things like that, get the picture what it, but irony doesn't always come across. Yeah. That's very true. So um, talking running forward, what's, what's in the pipeline with running back? Uh, if Anybody cares? <laughs> um, I'm sure they are. Uh, there is another uh, project by, you mentioned his name, Morris Fulton, um, but it's actually a band, it's not him alone, and um, it's called Booth, and it will be out end of October. Yeah. You got a listening sample? Yeah. Anybody wants to hear that? I really love this. It's all for Morris Fulton. Yeah. So, um, just tell us a little bit about the album because I think this tune raised a bit of curiosity among the people. Yeah, it will be out in October, but how did it come about? Um, it's, it's vintage Morris Fulton. It's a project by him with someone else. Um, and it has all the, the, the typical signs, like the slap bass and... Um, this kind of sleazy boogie beat, and uh, but there's there are also some more kind of heady tunes on there as well, and yeah, he's 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 a true. It's also stupid to say, that, but it it I think he's kind of a genius the way he designs his music. Designs. Yeah, he um, he sounds like no one. It always sounds like him. You you That's can true. spot it from miles away that he must have a hand in it. Do you think that's important for an artist that they have a signature in the music as well? Um, if I if I look back on those things I like the most, um, I really like one hit wonders, but um, there are a few guys, and they're special like Maurice Fulton, Morgan Geist, or Theo Parrish, and you kind of notice that they have a sound signature, and and this is something. Um, this is something really nice, if you if you have that, and I think it's it's a sign of that you actually not just do boom boom for drunken people, but you have a yeah you have something but, else. Another but you wouldn't level. consider Running Back being the label of the One Hit Wonders. Mm, okay, that's a really stupid I, question. Yeah, actually. but I, yeah, in a way maybe. So, um, 2007, we said you changed from releasing one record every two years, and I think that was Mark E. or Presuma, that was one of the first that you put out. Uh, what made you change your mind then? Did you th say, okay, now the university degree is not going to happen, I'm just going to go for the label and release more music? Yeah, I wanted to become really famous as a DJ, and um, <laughs> so I, I thought it's, it's the best way to put out as many records as I can. But I forgot to put my name on it, so it didn't work out with the being famous. But maybe you have one of those tunes then uh, from that time, 2007 or so, that you can play. I wish I would have a USB stick now where everything is in order. That's 2012. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Or maybe another tune that you I, are very I proud of. I could from your label. Yeah, but it's never my music, so I can't be really proud. I'm more like the office guy taking care um, that the record makes it into the shops. Well, but you produce as well, just speaking of which, that's not your music. You do, uh, you always have really funny pseudonames like Pink Alert, <laughs> Tough City Kids. Yeah. You've done a lot of remixes already. Pink, Pink Alert comes from like Cool DJ Red Alert. And I was wearing a pink polo shirt, and then <laughs> someone asked me what my DJ name was, and I just said things like that. And Tough City Kids is a tag I saw once on, in a toilet that I liked. So there's no, no deeper deeper. And meaning. you're producing together with whom? Uh, the guy's called uh, um, Philip Lauer, and he does stuff uh, under another moniker as well, called Ato Wambe. Mm -hmm. And it's more like we always have fun when we do something together, and it's, yeah. 
No. But you already said that you didn't bring any of your own tunes. No, unfortunately. You have a problem no. playing your own tunes in the club? Yeah, and I only do it sometimes when no one watches, and I can I, I want to see how it sounds, but it feels like laughing about your own jokes. I just can't, can't do it. I usually also can't play this stuff once it's released. Then it, I don't know, it's strange. But okay, um, I can play something by a guy from Berlin called Red Shape, and this will be um, one of the next ones. And it's really different to what Maurice Fulton sounds like. So we're running forward again. Yeah. Which the, tune? The second one. So we heard uh, some of the future music coming out on Running Back and uh, I already say thank you to Gerd Janssen. We'll open it up for Q&A. So we have a little microphone here as well. If any of you have any questions to Gerd Janssen. Okay, Alexi, Chicago. Oh, hello. What music? I have uh, some of your records. Thank you. <laughs> what age were you when you got started and, and knew that this was for you? How do you mean like that I want to kind of make a living with I mean, it? when you knew that it wasn't going to be a regular job for you, when you was like, like you said, um, uh, the PhD versus the entertainment. Um, I mean, are you, are you still figuring that out? I mean, <laughs> I'm still figuring out actually, yeah, because I'm, I'm still en on enrolled at, at university. So I have like this kind of thing back in my head where I think, okay, when I g get fed up with all of this, I can go back and finish, but to be honest, I mean, I, I mentioned a therapist, I probably mm -hmm. need one, and he would tell me, come on, guy, you will never finish it. How old are you? Uh, I'm unbelievably 34 now. So oh, you got, you, you still figuring yourself out. I mean, I'm 44 and I've been doing this forever and shit, so. Yeah, but you put out a Transmet record, you know? Yeah, believe that. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a record out on Transmet, so. I don't know if that's such a good thing, though. <laughs> we should. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk later on about that. Records on Transmat, records on tracks, and DJ National. Yeah, yeah I, I know. with everybody, but it's, it's, I, I didn't do it for them. I didn't do that record for Derek. I didn't do it for Transmat. I didn't even, you know, that record was done before I got there. I got introduced to Derek by a friend of mine, and that's how that happened. Yeah, you should sit here and be interviewed because I'm I didn't, like, I didn't, I didn't know, say I didn't any, know nothing about this. And I yeah, but I'm, 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 I didn't say, I, I didn't say anything substantial. You Don't know, worry, we'll so. talk when you get down and I'll tell you some real <laughs> stories. Okay, thank you. Help your career, you know, <laughs> help you find yourself. So I'm curious, uh, which university degree did you want to finish? Um, American Studies, History and uh, Political Science. Well, except for political, well, music is kind of political science in a way as well, right? And American history, you already did as well, so yeah, maybe you could write a PhD about it. Yeah, maybe, but then I should, yeah, spend time doing that instead of sitting here or oh, being we're, at We're happy across. that you're here. Yeah. Any other questions? Then I say a big thank you to Gerd Jansson. Thanks for up. having me. Take care. Okay, thank you.